So now that we're at the halfway point, I may as well share my thoughts on Fooly Cooly Alternative, the second of the Fooly Cooly sequels which nobody asked for, yet we still got anyway. Now right off the bat, I can tell you without any doubt in my mind that Fooly Cooly Alternative is leaps and bounds ahead of Progressive thus far. There are several things in particular that really put it ahead for me. First of all, the main character, Kanakamoto, is actually a character as opposed to Hidomi from Progressive. She has a similar setup to Hidomi in that she doesn't quite know what she wants to do with her life, but she's actively trying to figure it out, and she has her own personality, which automatically makes her more of a character than the last series gave us in a protagonist. Then again, she is sharing the spotlight with three other characters this time around, Mosan, Hijiri, and Pets, as they are called, But the focus is on Kana, and as protagonists go, automatically a better character than Hidomi. Also, the theming of this series actually feels like a proper progression of the themes from the first series. The original Fooly Cooly, in particular, was about Naota getting to that stage where he's ready to begin the journey to adulthood. Not what he perceives to be adulthood, which is where he starts, but actual adulthood, which is where he's on the path to going. However, Nauta was 12 years old, so it made sense to start him at that particular place. Kana is 17, which means she is almost on the verge of actual adulthood. So, that feels like a natural extension. The first series gave us the start of that journey, Alternative is giving us the end of that journey. Progressive, meanwhile, was just sitting there twiddling its thumbs, trying to figure out what to do, only to decide it didn't want to do anything. Also, and this isn't necessarily about the show itself, but I like the closing animation, with little paper cutout Kana walking through the gigantic real live-action world. I just like the visual aesthetic, and it's very well animated. So I do think Alternative is an improvement over Progressive. But does that necessarily mean I think it's a good series? Well, here's the thing. Fooly Cooly Alternative is a perfectly fine anime when it's not trying to be Fooly Cooly. The majority of what we see here is a fine slice of life coming of age story. It's very grounded and down to earth with a fairly good balance of light comedy and light drama. Were this not a Fooly Cooly sequel, it would be a serviceable series. Not groundbreaking by any stretch of the imagination, but a nice little diversion. However, it is a Fooly Cooly sequel, which means Haruko has to show up, and every time she does, she derails the series. It's unfortunate I have to say that, because Haruko is basically the driving force of Fooly Cooly, yet, here we are. Her presence and insistence on reminding us that this is meant to be a Fooly Cooly series hurts the show more than it helps it. This is clearly on display in Episode 2, where the plot plays out pretty standard on its own, but then the finale happens and it involves a car chase with Haruko shooting at a giant robot, which is definitely a staple of Fooly Cooly, even if the energy is still lacking from what we saw in the original, but it doesn't feel like it fits in the episode. Up until that point, we've been watching something that's fairly grounded and maybe a little soap opera-y, and then suddenly it's a sci-fi epic. It just doesn't fit. It comes out of nowhere. It feels intrusive. Episode 1 wasn't necessarily as bad in that department, though the intrusiveness was still on display. Actually, before I keep going, one bizarre choice they did with Episode 1 was to play a music video halfway through. The music video is comprised half of live-action footage of the band performing live, and the other half is of footage from the entire series. That is, the entire Fooly Cooly alternative series. So you can imagine there were some major spoilers that were on display. Halfway through episode one. I saw this and thought, I guess Fooly Cooly alternative doesn't want me to be surprised by anything. I know it's not unheard of for media tie-in music videos to do that sort of thing, but... Sticking that video halfway through the first episode of your six-episode series, that just isn't a good idea. Anyway, getting back on track, the intrusiveness of the Fooly Cooly elements into this otherwise grounded series that is alternative becomes even more obvious in episode three. 
Every time Haruko pops up, it comes out of left field, and not in a good way. The first time is the scene where she's posing as the school nurse, no doubt a callback to the original series. She makes the girls strip naked for absolutely no reason, and then starts acting like a huge creeper towards them. It's all played for laughs, of course, but it's not really funny. Call me old-fashioned, but my understanding is that a joke must have a punchline. What, then, is the joke of this particular scene? It just winds up coming across as strangely over-the-top and kind of uncomfortable. Then there's Haruko's... rap number. I knew this was coming because I saw the trailer, and it still threw me when it happened. There was absolutely no reason for this number to exist. The scene, which already feels kind of awkward, is going along as you might expect it to, and then she just starts rapping, without any invitation to do so. I'm not exaggerating, she suddenly starts rapping, and then just as suddenly stops. Not that I'm complaining that this sad excuse for hip-hop ended, but it feels like they ended it because they didn't actually know how to end it, so they just had her stop. The only good things I can say about this number are that, first, it's mercifully short, even though it feels painfully long, and second, at least Haruko doesn't open by saying, my name is Haruko and I'm here to say, like so many bad rap numbers in animation do. I admit I'm not a big fan of rap, but the genre has nothing to do with it. This could have been a rock song, which might have been more fitting, all things considered, and if it was handled the same way, it would have had the exact same effect. And then there's the finale of Episode 3. So, quick rundown of Episode 3's plot so you understand. The main focus is on Mosan, the heavyset girl, and her dreams of becoming a fashionista. It turns out that of our four new protagonists, she's the only one who has some sort of dream for the future. And she's entering her designs into a contest in the hopes that it will actually get somewhere. However, the conflict arises because Mosan wants to realize this dream on her own, otherwise she would feel it was a meaningless victory. So she gets upset when her friends try helping her. However, they only tried helping her because Mosan is running herself ragged. So the lesson is that you should be willing to accept help from others, especially when it's offered, and victory ultimately means nothing if you're not in good enough health to enjoy it. The story continues, we get to the end of the episode where it's the last round of the contest, and there's a big fashion show with all of the different contestants' dresses on display. The MC of the show, incidentally, looks kind of like Nabe Shin, which is weird. And you probably already know what's gonna happen. Mosan doesn't win. But that's not necessarily presented as the worst thing in the world. She's not gonna let it get her down. Again, good lesson. You're not always guaranteed victory, and if you lose, there's always next time. But right at this moment when you've forgotten that it's a Fooly Cooly series, Haruko disrupts things again. The actual winner is called on stage so her dress can be displayed once more, but apparently Haruko sabotaged things behind the stage and comes out wearing Mosan's dress, thus stealing the spotlight away from the actual winner, calling Mosan up on stage so she can have the spotlight, and then Haruko has a very lackluster fight with security before destroying the stage and running off. Then Mosan declares she's going to become a model. Well now what's the lesson supposed to be? If you lose, just count on a deus ex machina to make things go your way? If somebody else gets ahead of you, sabotage them? This was a terrible ending, and it's all because the series was trying to insert Fooly Cooly where it doesn't belong. At this point, while I would still say Fooly Cooly Alternative is better than Fooly Cooly Progressive, it still doesn't hold a candle to the original. Let me put it this way. The difference between the original Fooly Cooly and these two sequels is the difference between the original canvas painting of Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa and a novelty mug with the Mona Lisa's image printed on it. Sure, it might bear the familiar image, and the mug may function perfectly fine when you pour coffee or tea into it, but there's just no way it's going to equal the original painting. It's ultimately just an imitation, a mass-produced product, rather than a unique work of art. 
I will reserve full judgment on Fully Cooly Alternative until the end, because at the very least I do want to see if it can carry through where Fully Cooly Progressive failed, but ultimately I still feel that Fully Cooly Alternative would have been better had it not been Fully Cooly. Had all trace elements of Fully Cooly been removed from it, and it had simply been allowed to be its own very grounded series. It probably would have remained cliché, but at the same time, at least that cliché nature would have been consistent throughout.